Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in June. I know that I am a little bit behind on putting this video out and for that I apologize, but better late than never. So overall June was, I would say, pretty okay reading month. I read a few books that I would say were a little unmemorable, but I didn't read anything that I thought was particularly bad, so that was definitely a win. I completed a total of six books and that added up to 1,915 pages. As far as ratings went, I read two three stars, one three and a half star, and three four stars. Now as usual, I think that I will talk about these books in the order that I enjoyed them, starting with the book I liked the least, working my way up to the book I liked the most. That way we can end on a high note. So let's just jump right in and talk about all of the books that I read in June. All right, first up we have Screams from the Void by Anne Tibbetts. This is a sci-fi uh, sci thriller, I would say. This is the story of a crew on a science vessel that has been sent into deep space. Uh, it's a mission of exploration and also they're collecting like uh, biological specimens like plants and things like that for study. It's a very small crew and they're pretty much at each other's throats. So they're not happy. This is not a happy group of people to start with. Some sort of specimen is uh, gets onto the ship and it's not well contained and basically all hell breaks loose. So you have this sort of crisis situation that is just panicking everyone and that chaos is compounded by the fact that the crew is just really, really unhappy to begin with. So I ended up giving this story three stars. I would say overall, I had a good time reading it, though it did have a few issues. Some aspects of this were a little too far-fetched for me. Uh, I tend to think that if this actually happened in real life, there would be better safety protocols to keep a situation from like this from happening to begin with. So I don't know, it was a little out there for me in that regard. Also, the characters were, I think they were well developed enough. I don't feel like I have to like every character. I don't feel like I have to like any characters, but I do like there to be at least one character that I'm like really interested in and, and want to kind of get behind them or learn more about them or get interested in their story. I didn't really feel that way about any of the characters in this book. And also overall, this was a fairly forgettable story. Uh, but like I said, I did enjoy reading it. Um, I was wrapped up in what was happening. I was interested to find out what was going to happen, like how it was, how it was all going to end up. And because of that, I generally won't give a, a book less than three stars if it is engaging to me. But I'm already forgetting the finer points of this and a year from now I will have no memory of what this was about. Hence, I ended up giving it three stars. All right, next up we have The Other Me by Sarah Zachary Jane. This, I would say genre-wise, this is a very, very light sci-fi, kind of a contemporary sci-fi. The story follows a woman who is just sort of living her life but then is suddenly cast into this new reality uh, and she has all of these memories that feel very real to her of this other life that she had been living previous to this moment. She is uh, in a relationship that she that she wasn't in previously that she doesn't remember. She's living a life that d it doesn't feel like it's hers and she can very clearly remember her previous life and so she is trying to figure out what's going on. She's questioning her own sanity like did she imagine this other life that she was in before or uh, was it actually real? Uh, and she's just trying to get to the bottom of what's going on. Now this generally is like my kind of book. This is my kind of story, the kind of concept that I really enjoy. I had a good time while I was reading it, though much like uh, Screams from the Void, this wasn't particularly memorable. I ended up giving this book three stars. It was a solid three star read for me. I enjoyed it while I read it, but it wasn't life changing. Going into this type of story, you, you know that you're going to have to really suspend your disbelief and that's fine. I can do that. I can get behind that. But there were some kind of like logical issues to this book that were a little bit distracting for me. Um, and also I feel like this book kind of drug in parts. Like I feel like it could have done just like a little bit more. I honestly don't have a whole lot more to say about it. It was, it wasn't particularly profound fun, but, but I'm, it's just not going to stick with me. All right, next up we have Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. This is the next book in the Wayfarer series. Um, this is, these are sci-fi novels. Uh, they are 
all of these actually, all the books in the Wayfair series are space operas, which I really enjoy a good space opera. They, though they, they're loosely tied together, the, each book in the series, but though they definitely kind of do their own thing, and this was definitely its own thing with its own characters. This story in particular fo follows a number of different characters who have their own sort of storylines and plot points. Humanity has fled Earth. It has been many, many years, and all of the humans on this ship have kind of uh, created this new way of life. Um, and the, the ship is, tr it's like its own world, basically. Uh, and this book really is very much a kind of slice of life. There aren't, there aren't any major things happening in this book. It's just, this book is really kind of a character exploration. Uh, different characters sort of like following them and seeing, seeing what uh, their lives are like in this sort of post-Earth world. I ended up giving this book three and a half stars, which I, to be very honest, I feel like is fairly generous. Uh, this is by far my least favorite of all the books that I've read in the Wayfarer series, mostly because I felt like it was more trying to make some sort of point, uh, in a, a couple of different points, rather than tell a story. Um, now, a story doesn't always have to be really high action and, you know, page turning or anything, but um, I'm just not the the most character driven reader. The characters were not terribly interesting to me, though I did enjoy it while I was reading it, and I think it did explore some interesting themes. It was okay, like it was an okay book. Um, I would still recommend it, I, specifically for people who really like slice of life stories, who want a sci-fi that is a slice of life and very kind of a cozy sci-fi. I guess people call these the Wayfair series like cozy sci-fi. Uh, and if that's something that appeals to you, then this definitely may be a book that you that you might really enjoy. So I would I would say pick it up and give it a shot. Give the whole series a shot. I really enjoyed it so far. Um, it's just it's just not my favorite of the Wayfair series. All right, next up the list, we have Little Brother by Cory Doctorow. This is a uh, YA sci-fi, and I would say it has um, some, it pretty lightly leans into like a sort of dystopian concept. The story follows a group of teenagers, a friend group of teenagers, who they're in high school, and they, they all live in San Francisco, and there is a terrorist attack in San Francisco, and this group, they're kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time, and end up being taken in by the Department of Homeland Security, and interrogated, and lots of terrible stuff happens. One of the characters decides that um, he he isn't going to take it lying down and basically starts plotting for revenge. Now, I don't read a ton of YA sci-fi or just YA in general, uh, but this was a book that was recommended to me by my husband. He really likes Cory Doctorow, and I am glad that I picked this up. I did really enjoy it. I feel like a lot of the YA qualities of this book, the lightness of that helped to balance up help to balance out some of the heavier qualities and aspects of the book. This book had um, like a lot of computer hacking in it, which I think is really interesting. However, it was, uh, it did a lot of like kind of over explaining in my opinion. If you're the kind of person who wants that, who needs to know like who will question the entire story if they don't have, you know, that kind of stuff explained. This book goes very in depth and I think that you would really appreciate it if you're that kind of reader. For me, it was too much. Uh, and also it it's a little heavy handed, like as far as uh, sort of the, the political themes and it's really kind of a conspiracy theory, like strong conspiracy theory elements. Um, and so it, made it a pretty intense, uh, pretty intense conceptually. Like I was saying, it being a YA, the sort of lightness of that really helped to balance it out for me. Also, I really enjoyed the characters. I thought the characters were really fun and interesting. And it was, it was overall just a fun book. I, I ended up giving it four stars. Um, this is actually the first in the series, the first in the series. I don't think that I will continue on in the series. I think this was enough for me. But I would recommend it if you, if you like books with with, with strong political elements, conspiracy theories, dystopian, um, computer hacking, that kind of stuff, YA, sci-fi, uh, this, you may really enjoy this book as well. Next on the list is Ubik by Philip K. Dick. This is a classic sci-fi novel. Uh, it is my first novel I've ever read by Philip K. Dick, and I would call this kind of 
it was sort of cyberpunk but also really noir kind of a noir cyberpunk sci-fi um this i think was written in maybe the 60s is that right yeah 1969 it was copywritten in 1969 this is set in a future where there are where there are people who have psychic abilities and also there are anti-psychics the psychics in this world um they, they'll spy on corporations, and so a lot, a lot of corporations will hire these teams of anti-psychics to help uh, protect their privacy. And so this story follows a group of anti-psychics anti who have been hired by this corporation to sort of flush out some spies. And through a sort of crazy turn of events, they realize that this job that they were hired for was not what it seems, and their reality starts to kind of unspool. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. It's it's a fairly complex storyline, and also I don't want to say too much about it. It's a short book, uh, and I don't want to give too much away about it, especially given that this book was written when it was, was a surprisingly enjoyable read for me. I mean, this definitely had some, uh, a lot of things that you would expect from a sci-fi novel written in this period to, to have, such as the writing style was a little bit dry, the characters were pretty underdeveloped, uh, though going to, going into a book, a sci-fi novel in, in, that was written in this era, you tend to kind of expect that. Uh, that being said, this was conceptually unlike anything that I've ever read. It was wildly imaginative. And I don't know, like, this is a book that will definitely stick with me. And a book that makes me I, like I would really like to read more by Philip K. Dick. Uh, I ended up giving this book four stars because it did... It, it was lacking in certain ways, and primarily what I was lacking was the development of the characters. They were interesting characters, they just never really felt particularly real to me. And I also felt like there were definitely some aspects of the story that could have been kind of explained a little bit better, sort of elaborated on a little bit more. Even at that, like, this was, it was a fun read, and uh, I would I would absolutely recommend it if you've never read a Philip K. Dick novel. Uh, and you you really like sci-fi. I don't know that this would be the most like beginner friendly if you've never read sci-fi before. But if you are a sci-fi reader and you have never read a book by him, I would I would definitely say give this one a shot. All right. And last but not least, the book that I liked the most of everything that I read in the month of June, and that was I Am Behind You by John Lindqvist. This is a Swedish novel. It's a translated work. Uh, which I never would have guessed that if I hadn't known otherwise. The translation is fantastic. Uh, this is a horror novel, and it is about a group a group of people who are they're camping. They're at a little RV park in I guess uh, somewhere you know in the woods or whatever, and all of a sudden they vanish and reappear in a field in the middle of, of nowhere. They have no idea where they are. It's just this this unending green grass field, blue sky, as far as they can see, but there is no sun. And no matter how far they venture out, they don't they don't see anyone or anything. There is no conceivable passage of time since there is no sun, there is no moon, there are no day there is no day night cycle. And they have they have no idea what has happened, why they've gotten there, what is going on. It is one of the creepiest books I've ever read by far. The book is largely told in flashbacks of each individual character, which I think there are about eight or ten characters in total. They are all carrying some pretty intense baggage, some much darker than others. As you might be able to guess throughout the course of the story, some of the characters sort of begin to lose it, and it, the story just really goes off the rails, but in a good way, in a good way, I would say. This is one of the most page-turning novels that I have read read in a while for a lot of reasons. Now, I very, very much enjoyed this book, but it doesn't have the highest ratings, and I think that the main reason for that is that if you need, like, every loose end tied up and everything explained, this is not going to be the book for you. Also, you really kind of have to enjoy very disorienting storyline. This book is very disorienting. The whole, the, all of the suspense is hinging on 
you as the reader having no idea what's going on. And you really kind of have to be a fan of that to get into this book. It's very disturbing, it's very unsettling, some very graphic, gory, horrible things happen. It has strong slasher horror qualities to it as well as very like disturbing psychological horror uh, qualities as well. So just know that going into it. I if <laughs> this book isn't for everyone, but if it if what I've said sounds appealing to you, I would 100% recommend that you give it a shot. This is the first in a series I am going to be reading on in the series. Um, I did end up only giving this four stars rather than four and a half or five stars. There were some aspects of this book that I feel like, honestly, it's hard to explain without giving spoilers. Um, the best way the best way to describe it though is that there were some missed opportunities in this book but still highly enjoyable read. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens in this series. This is a book that I really enjoyed. The more time that passes, the more it's sticking with me, the more I think about it. So so yeah, really, really enjoyed this one. All right, so I think that that is going to be it for me. Those are all of the books that I read in the month of June. I'd be very curious to know if you have read any of them and what you thought about them. So I hope that you will talk to me about it in the comments down below. Also, if you read anything particularly interesting in June, I would absolutely love to hear about it in the comments as well. I am always looking for my next great book recommendation. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you will like it and possibly subscribe and I will see you next time.